Okay, so now it's my turn, and uh, I haven't touched my cake, uh, because, and I should have put myself on earlier. There you go, it's my own fault. Okay, so um, my presentation is about uh, being outside of your comfort zone, about doing a different ty type of teaching and having to reconsider uh, very much how you, how you do it. And so uh, I had to ask myself, how did I? Mr. Fila Hiff, teacher, trainer, course developer, academic manager for teens and adults, 11 and up would be uh, fine. How did I end up here? <laughs> um, and so this is um, an NGO based in Tamil Nadu, which I was uh, volunteering with uh, and helping them to design a course for their the children who are resident in the home there because either one or both of their parents are uh, are dead due to the HIV problem in the area and other kind of difficult issues. And uh, if you can see that they have these little stickers on their noses and in various other places, um, that was a um, piece of uh, paper colored in and a piece of sellotape. And they were the rewards for them getting the questions right or for, <laughs> for answering in full. Full, in full sentences, and they seemed uh, delighted by the idea that they could stick it on to different parts of their of their uh, body. Uh, this girl put them on her on her neck. This girl put it on her nose, and that's me in the days when I did have a beard, uh, kind of delighted with the uh, with the success of my of my activity. So these were the guys who uh, who got me over there. Um, in front here, you have. Paddy Doolan, who was a fundraiser for the Society for, for People with Development uh, in this very rural part of Tamil Nadu. And he approached the school I worked in and said, we need some advice about uh, setting up an English program. And I said, well, don't, isn't, isn't English a main language in, in India? And he said, yes, it is, if you're upper, middle to upper class. But if you're not, then, then uh, it's very difficult uh, to get the necessary tuition uh, to a necessary standard in order to be able to participate, which means that you're not only locked out of foreign cultures, but you're locked out of your own uh, country in a very uh, substantial way if you can't access the legal system, for example, which is all based in English. So I went over uh, on his invitation to see if we could be of any help, and the guy beside him is um, Mr. Raju Joseph, who is the founder of this locally based NGO in, uh, in Tamil Nadu. So it wasn't like me coming in from Europe saying, oh, I can solve all your problems. It was coming from there saying, we have a, uh, a problem and asking for, for, for some advice. So I went there and with my uh, experience of here, I went there saying, well, I don't really know anything. I've got a very kind of uh, I feel very ignorant about uh, what the students are like, what their needs are. Uh, this is what school looks like in, uh, in this part of, of, of Tamil Nadu. Uh, large classes and uh, with a large amount of memorization. They're very, very good at memorization, uh, rote learning, and um, if you present them with anything, they, they repeat it very, very effectively, but no clue what it means. So you kind of go, oh yeah, they, they've got that. But then you try to get them to use it in communication, and it doesn't work. So memorization is a, is, a, is a skill that they've mastered. Communication is not a skill that they have any concept of. And this was a kind of amazing kind of realization for me of how can you be able to reproduce it, but then not use it. And they remembered long spiels of stuff they had to the, the approach here was, okay, these kids are never going to have a communicative level of English, so what we'll do is, the same way as the Irish Leaving Cert system uh, was, we get them to learn off the essay. We get them to learn off. We get them to learn off the questions, we get them to learn off the answers, and all they have to do is reproduce it. And they have these amazing words that they know, but then you ask them anything beyond the simple of, uh, where are you coming from? Which is, was always, I love the ING. Uh, uh, anything beyond... Uh, what's, your uh, what's your name, what age are you, where are you coming from? And, and they're, they're at a complete loss for conversation. And you think, but you know 
you know, uh, you know, coach, you know, um, hockey, and you know, kind of un unusual words, perturbed. <laughs> and, and you can't then have a communicative exchange about what you had for lunch. And it's not that they don't have the vocabulary, it's just that the skill of communication is not taught. Uh, and so schoolwork looks like that, homework looks like this. Now you probably can't see it, but this is an ad adapted ex extract from Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Uh, and uh, they have the comprehension questions, uh, glossary, here with pronunciation guides, comprehension questions afterwards. And so this is their exposure to English. But even more amazing than that is this is the reading section. Here you have the listening section, uh, which is basically listen to the teacher read this dialogue. And they have the speaking section, which is read this dialogue in pairs. Uh, and that's uh, four skills for um, integrated, integrated uh, in English class. But that's how you spend and English is, is a subject in the school system. They get it, uh, you know, many hours every week, and yet they don't succeed in gaining any any communicative ability. And so, lots of teaching, but there's no there's no there's no learning going on. So, realize that that small thing of how do you make the English that you're learning useful in communication was something that we definitely could help them with. And so, uh, we went. Uh, Said about developing a, a course to 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 to, uh, to do with that, and I said, well, I'm going to have to teach them for a bit to see uh, how how this might work, um, because my experience is with ten years and up, not with ten years and down, and so uh, I'm going to show you a little video, and um, you know. It, it, there, there are speed bumps on this bus, as you, as, as, as you'll see, and uh, it really, the experience of working with these kids really made me kind of think about all those things I take for granted about about teaching. So, um, I don't know. Hopefully, the the, the <coughs> volume will carry, um, but it's a short, uh, a short, a short video which I've carefully edited to see the progress of this lesson. And so he says, this is the end point, which is a role play, where they're, um, they're role playing getting on the bus. Um, and you just see, all, in a very kind of edited selection, you'll see how, uh, over the course of an hour, I haltingly worked, worked, worked my way towards that. He's looking at the, showing, me, showing me the picture and telling me these are the passengers, these are the wheels on the bus, and so on, that they had to draw. This is my control uh, technique. My movement towards student-directed communication. <laughs> One group answering to the other group, trying to set up the dialogue. Which is a big city nearby. <laughs> Lots of 
gestures, visual, and uh, physical. She was getting ahead of everybody else and wanted to go to how many tickets. This is a big problem. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, I'm not sure that I had the measure of them, uh, but that was my uh, experience, uh, which um, I've never worked so hard uh, <laughs> as a teacher in my, in, in my life. And uh, so I had to look at my, uh, all these things that I knew that I knew, but I had taken them for granted because when you're an experienced teacher, you have a set of uh, activities and approaches that you improvise on. And this becomes a, an unconscious competence. You find it very hard to explain to anybody else how you made it work. It's a sort of a feeling. It just kind of happens. And um, when you come up against young learners, it, you really have to rethink of, you know, how do I make it work? Because you have to um, they take, take your approach apart and put it back together again in order for it to, uh, to function. Now, all of these things that I reflected on as a result of my experience, I then applied again to my work teaching adults. It's not like that one is, uh, there, there, there are two different worlds and there's different things apply. It's just that everything that applies when teaching adults applies when teaching children just more so. And uh, there's, no, there's no room for, okay, what am I gonna do next? Or uh, what do you guys want to do? Or any of that kind of thing. You have to have it down. So. It's the same scale. It's just under. It's just magnified, um, and so any, if anything isn't working, it's going to be magnified. Um, so that is, uh, you really need to plan. You really need to know what's coming next, and you need to have that at the forefront of your of your mind, because there's no time to let them chat among themselves. They won't wait uh, while you decide what comes next. Um, and. In teaching with adults, you can wing it a little bit when you're experienced, but they don't get as good an outcome from you uh, uh, th 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 as they would when you have a plan. So as a result of my implementing this realisation, I'm known in the teacher training course that I work on as the plan man. Um, and I take it as a compliment. Um, okay, you have to manage yourself in order to manage them. This is how you are in the room is, is, is a key tool. So if you want to be calm, you have to be calm. Even if it starts with a chaos, you've got to talk calmly and uh, try and project the feeling that you want uh, onto them. If you want to be them to be enthusiastic, you have to be enthusiastic. Uh, so it really, I knew that this was true from, from when dealing with adults, but it really kind of brings it into sharp relief when you're dealing with kids. Treat spoken words differently to written. We are so used to uh, the spoken and the written being linked, that we forget that they're com two completely different codes for commu of communication. And when you're dealing with the under 10s, you've got to teach them the spoken, meaningful stuff first. And then maybe you can move to, can you identify which word is which? And then maybe you can go to, uh, can you write it? Because their first language is Tamil, which is written in a different script. And so they're dealing with, this, with, a, with an alternative script, and some of them really struggle to write their own names in, in, in English characters. And so, again, this is a lesson that can be applied to all classes, but it's just so second nature to us, so easy to forget. Be clear and consistent. Yeah, this is really important. It's not any single cons uh, successful activity that makes, uh, uh, makes 
that students learn from. It's not any, any one thing that you do. It's the accumulation of things that you do over time. And it's very difficult to forget from one day to the next, from one week to the next, what that was. But if you're not being consistent, then that kind of accumulation of um, things learned is, is, is going to be disrupted. And so you need to take a longer view uh, of that. Be patient and persistent. Um, the first time you want any activity with the younger learners, it's going to be a mess. And you have to kind of not give up on that. Um, um, wait till you got their focus, try again if you lose them. And but the second time, the third time when they're familiar with it, then you really get the benefit of it. Uh, so that bus role play, you know, if when we revise it the next day, uh, then they were they were playing. It was fun. It was a it, it, was, it was a game, and they were using the language. Uh, but it's not going to work the first time. And if something doesn't work, you've got to find a different way. Try and try again. And the teacher is, um, you know, to teach the responsibility to make it work. Not the it's not the student's fault if it doesn't work. We can't we can't look at it that way. Be fun, firm, and fair. Very difficult balance. And with kids, you know, I'm a pushover, I'm afraid. <laughs> but uh, ha, uh, if you're not firm, then the, the, the kids who are the kids who are playing ball feel you're being unfair because somebody else got away with it. And they're 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 trying to you know be responsible kids, but you're not applying it fairly. Okay. And uh, yeah, final thought: there are no blank slates or, or empty vessels. I mean, these kids in particular are bringing some very difficult stuff into the into the into the classroom with them, and it's easy to forget that. But that's true of all students everywhere. They have their stuff going on outside the room, and if they're being difficult, maybe it's due to something else that you that 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 you're not aware. Okay, that's mine. Thank you very much.